This video is going to be a little bit of a bait and switch, I'll be honest with you. This is intended to be somewhat of a preview for the Ravens-Lions matchup in terms of predicting the Ravens' off offense versus the Lions' defense that's been really great at stopping the run this year. I am going to show some option concepts for the Ravens that were utilized a, a ton against the Titans in Week 6. Of course, we know that under Greg Roman, the Ravens utilized a pistol option a lot. QB counter read out of typical shotgun QB power read. Um, multiple option read concepts that the Mar Jackson used to create highlight real plays, win games, in clutch moments for the Ravens. However, if if you're someone new to watching Ravens film and you think that that's what the Ravens still run offensively, you are seriously mistaken. So briefly, before we get into the option plays from week six, even though Ravens fans, uh, myself included, are frustrated with the t the direction of the offense in the second half, of many games, there's a lot of evidence that this offense is working. There's slot fade concepts like this one that Lamar has hit to multiple different receivers. Aguilar, OBJ, he's missed a couple to Bateman. He's hit one to Zay Flowers against the Texans. This beautiful throw against the Browns on the road in what increasingly looks like a really good win uh, against a great Browns defense. You can see Mark Andrews fully extended reaching to catch the ball in the back of the end zone on a third down, mind you, uh, end zone angle, same play. Uh, Todd Munkin's offense install, there have been hiccups in terms of the execution on the field. I'm sure that the install in practice has been amazing. When you're facing NFL caliber defenses, as good as the Browns are, I think the Lions defense is, is, meets that standard, particularly against the run. They're missing Brian Branch, C.J. Gardner-Johnson, uh, going to be out for an extended amount of time. So, so that matchup, you know, it's just like many other matchups in the NFL. You've got issues as far as predicting it when one team has health issues. Well, guess what? The Ravens do too. OBJ has had an impact. Rashad Bateman has yet to have a huge statistical impact. That's, that's clear. The Ravens offense is drastically different than what we've seen before. It's drastically different because of its intention. It is truly a spread offense. I've intentionally picked these plays to show you multiple guys getting the football it's not as Lamar-centric as it previously used to be in terms of reading the option. We know that Mark Andrews is a big part of it, whether it's 22 personnel, whether it's 11 personnel. He is, in a lot of ways, the central force, along with Lamar, adding Zay Flowers to the mix, who I'll do an entirely uh, Zay Flowers-focused preview sometime here Thursday night or Friday. It's going to be a Super Bowl-type pre preview for me. That's the way I look at it, because these are the two teams I watch the most film of. Having said all that about the education or graduation of the offense, I should say, from what it used to be to what it's trying to become, we still have the ability to run the option with Lamar. And now this is actually called QB counter read, to be honest with you, or called QB counter. So this is actually not a read. I'll show you the end zone angle and prove it to you in a minute if you haven't seen this play. We still have the ability to utilize option concepts and stress the defense wherever we want to. So Todd Munkin, it's a huge blessing for him to be able to have all these weapons, number one. Number two, have a guy like Lamar that he can do this stuff with in terms of option plays. Now, this is actually not a read, to be honest with you. As, as Zay Flowers moves through here, you'll see him dropping his pad level to clearly complete the play fake. So it's not an actual read, QB counter read, or what a lot of people call bash. is a commonly used concept at multiple levels of football. The Ravens run it great with Lamar Jackson they, since they started implementing it in um, 2020. Okay, some actual option concepts. If you're unfamiliar with the option game, here will be three or four different plays to, to show you some of the concepts and how it's read. So Lamar's in the pistol. In the past, yes, it was. this was typically run to Pat Ricard's side, and here it is again. Uh, to Pat Ricard's side. So the read man, and I think I'll give you the end zone angle of this play as well. The read man is this defensive end to the boundary. Additionally, you've got Zay Flowers going in motion, and then he's going to go pick up and try to block the number one receiver. I think it's Duve to the boundary, who goes and gets the safety number two. And you can see Lamar has kept it because the DN stepped down with the dive. So it's a constant worry or fear for your DNs. <clears throat> whether you're the Lions, the Titans, or the Steelers. Now, let me tell you what the Steelers... actually didn't give you the end zone angle of that play. My, my apologies. What the Steelers would do, the Steelers would take their DNs and just tell them, run right at Lamar. Force a give read all day. And when they didn't do that, they would have trouble, particularly like two third downs in the Ravens' Week 5 loss. So here's another option play. 
Uh, third downs is when it seems like Munkin likes to use these calls, third and two, third and three, very similar to um, Greg Roman. The version of this that you're getting here is 11 personnel. So Andrews is on as the tight end. And then Aguilar, who's an underrated blocker, is being used at the point of attack to kind of arc release. And what that means is he's arc releasing outside of this D end, who's the read man. So they're really isolating that read man. I think it's the same actual player. And Aguilar is responsible to go get the nickel defender. Now, he actually doesn't block him in the manner that I drew up. He actually kind of forces him out to the sideline, gives Lamar a real natural scene. You can see the the relationship that Aguilar has got to Lamar. Aguilar is on the inside. McCreary, who's the force player, he's being told, you're the force player. You've got to keep everything inside. So Aguilar is easily able to get the inside. Justice Hill also gets involved. There's the end zone angle of that play. My apologies from the end zone. You see this, is, this guy's the read man. I knew I had it in there. I just labeled him wrong number, num numerically. So he steps down. So since he steps down, Lamar has re read that and kept it to go around the edge. Now let's talk about what you may or may not know as a football fan watching option stuff. Lamar isn't going to look with his face mask directly at that guy immediately. He's going to be looking like out of like the 45 degree angle of his helmet for a moment. Why? Because he doesn't want to necessarily give it away. Number two, he's also got to get his body set up to give the midline to the tailback if it's a counterplay. Now, when we talk about the midline, it's a direct line from the ball through the quarterback, through the running back. So if it's a counterplay, and you will see this uh, as well if you watch the Ravens line game, Lions game on Sunday, is the running back coming downhill and then veering off the midline. So in order to do that, Lamar's got to step off the midline. So if you're looking at some of these plays and you're thinking, you're trying to figure out what the, what the play is, what the read is, He's not giving away the midline here. His feet are actually on it because it's not a counterplay. That's the point. He's got to, he doesn't want to get too far in this direction to then lose ground trying to run out to the edge on a keep read. Hopefully I said that in a way that makes sense. Easy read for Lamar. Seven or eight yards, first down into the boundary. Let me guess. End zone angle, same play I showed you a moment ago. I'm not sure why those plays got mixed up order-wise. My apologies. So this is the 11 personnel run where Aguilar goes and gets the nickel. Uh, McCreary, and they've isolated this D-end here. Oftentimes what you'll get teams doing is scrape exchange it or gap exchange it. Well, if you don't practice that as much all week defensively, because that's not what the Ravens are doing all the time, then you're less efficient at executing that technique during the game. So a scrape exchange, exchange or a gap exchange. Again, Aguilar is going to go out and get the nickel. Justice Hill is going to mesh with Lamar. His path could be in that direction. It could be a designed wind back there. So scrape exchange for the defense. So the DN coming down the line, forcing a keep read by Lamar, and then this inside linebacker seeing it and scrape exchanging over the top for the quarterback. All right, so that's one of the concepts that you can do to try to, quote, stop the option. It also kind of opens you up a little bit if a team runs split zone and they kick out this guy running down the line that run the inside linebacker runs himself out of there and now you've got no player to to deal with the cutback on the backside on that split zone but in any case you can see how the scrape exchange does not happen here they did not run that on this play the d end is isolated lamar keeps the football even though they're no longer an option team still very well trained justice hill is trained okay you don't get the football you don't stop playing, go downhill to the point of attack. You know where Lamar's going and go try to block somebody. And you can see he almost is able to get there and complete the block that could have sprung Lamar for an even larger gain. A couple of more option concepts here. This one's got Zay Flowers in the backfield. Super dangerous play. I would love to see this ball give, given to Zay Flowers. Hopefully I give you the end zone angle of this one. My apologies, but... It's, again, out of 11 personnel, but you see, you're like, oh, hold on a second, there's two running backs back here. Well, Gus Edwards is serving as basically the fullback here. Zay Flowers is now the tailback. There's the one tight end, Andrews. It's what I call a joker set. QB counter read. This is actually a read, not like the Browns play that I showed you a little while ago. That was just QB counter. Lamar keeps it, I think, mistakenly. And still ends up getting seven yards. That's how I fly the key is. Maybe even more. Maybe it's eight. All right, I got them set up properly this time. My apologies for the other stuff. So 
Andrews is going to do his little deke block, I'm sure. Gus Edwards is going to lead out to the edge for Flowers, who you can imagine would it's tantalizing to see him given the football here because of his athleticism, his ability to make people miss. Lamar sees this guy stepping down and for whatever reason keeps it. Now, imagine what Lamar has to do as an option quarterback. This is a reverse read. We used to call this steal. So meaning on a typical option play like the one I showed you with Gus Edwards where Gus is running downhill here and Lamar's feet are on the midline. If this guy steps down, what's Lamar do? Lamar keeps it like the play I showed you. Lamar keeps it so he can run around the edge. This is reversed. This is some people call We used to call this inverted veer as well on another coaching staff. Inverted veer. So now Flowers is running out to the edge. If this guy steps down, it's it's now a give read. It's the total opposite read. He's got to be able to execute both of those reads full speed in a game against NFL defenders. People who were like, oh, the game is made easy for Lamar. You think reading the option is easy? You're dead wrong. He's got to be able to read multiple option concepts now. Now, he has the benefit of being in that offense for the last three or four years under Greg Roman, so those things have hopefully been ingrained. And um, even though right here, I think he misread it. All right, final point for this is, look, this is consider this an abbreviated preview. If you're, if you're a Lions fan, you watch this long. First of all, thank you. If you're a Ravens fan, you watch this long. Well, you've seen these plays already, and you've probably seen me break them down. Before. Well, maybe not the Titans plays. I, I, I reserved the option plays um, until these previews. I, I really am interested in the matchup of Munkin versus Aaron Glenn, two older guys that have been around the game of football a long time the offensive coordinator for the Ravens, Todd Munkin, who came from Georgia, and then Aaron Glenn, former NFL star, who's a great player in the NFL, who's now a defensive coordinator for the Lions. Those guys are older. And then the, the, the matchup on the other side, McDonald versus Ben Johnson, those guys are incredibly younger. We have some really unique and hopefully interesting thumbnails to use to uh, illustrate those previews, that dynamic on each side of the ball. Consider this an abbreviated preview of the Ravens' offense versus the Lions' defense. I didn't get to any film of the Lions' defense at all. I didn't have any time here Thursday morning to really prepare anything other than try to talk about the option and how it's still a weapon that Todd Munkin can go to um, whenever he wants to, particularly third downs. It was not nearly as effective. It has not been nearly as effective in the red zone the last two weeks because the Steelers and Titans' defense are really were really good in the red zone. The Lions are, to me, cut from the same cloth. Really good defensively against the run. Really good defensively in the red zone. I'm not sure what the metrics say. I'm just talking about what I see because I watch film of both of these teams all the time. Appreciate you guys' time. Let me know what you think of this shortened preview um, in the comment section.